two locations. Yeah, this is why I, I have to stream, stream with with two different programs. Stream I Poor quality. Be a lot easier. Um, hey, so that should be the correct stream key. It should show up. Yep, we're good. Okay. Are you live on YouTube as well? We're good. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So welcome to another Comcast. I think this is like episode number six, 16 or something. Mm -hmm. Like we do this every week. So it's like 16 weeks, 25 years. It's a long time. And <laughs> we're going to talk today about something that's positive. It's a different kind of Comcast. Usually we kind of... Mm, migrate towards negative subjects because it's quite impossible not to. And for today, we said, let's do it only positive for, for positive, something positive, like what excites us about the future? What kind of positive things we, we see in the world today? It must be something there. And if, if we say something, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> if we say something negative, uh, it's, we are going to kick, kick, kick us out from the Jitsi or something. We, we are not allowed to say anything <laughs> negative. <laughs> Exile. Exile. <laughs> uh, you have to pay to Bill Gates. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, we have this. You have to pay to Bill Gates or to to a billionaire of your choice if you, yeah. <laughs> if you say something negative. <laughs> so that motivates us to not say anything negative. And we have today, we have someone uh, new, Sophie. Sophie is hi, Sophie. Is, she's helping us with uh, uh, designing drone books. Right now, he's working on Dima's book, the For Profit Entertainment. And it's her first time, so yeah, we are excited. Let's see, let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, what should we talk about today? About um, like the positive things. I have a list of stuff. I didn't have that much time to put stuff on my list, but I have a, a list of stuff. And before we begin, I want to mention that people can join this cast, but only if you are positive. I mean, we don't accept you if you're negative. <laughs> And you can go on tromsai.com and uh, live uh, updates, and you will see there the Jitsi link. You can you can join us. Okay. So, any of you thought about like the the subject for today? Do you have anything in mind? I can start, but I want you guys to to say something as well <laughs> to break the ice. Uh, the interplanetary <laughs> file systems got me pretty excited. Too. I think you're pretty familiar with that. What is that? Because Sophie wants to know. Oh, okay. right, Sophie. Yeah, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, so interplanetary file system. I guess you can kind of think of it as like the uh, the Internet 2.0 uh, virtual drive, cloud drive. I mean, cloud is, I guess, the closest thing we have to kind of understanding what IPFS is. It's kind of the cloud is you just, you know, you throw your data up somewhere and you can access it. You know, that's that's kind of the gist. Uh, the IPFS is, is a way to do that decentralized. So... You know what torrents are and uh, P2P sharing, uh, then uh, that's how. Hello. <laughs> hey, Jennifer. Hey. Hi. Oh, nice to see you. Hey, really. Everyone. Hello. For those who don't know, Jennifer also wrote books for Trom and she was oh, very wow. active in Trom in the Excellent. past. Yeah. Cool. We didn't keep in touch lately, but now I'm, I'm so, so surprised to see you. <laughs> great that you joined. Everything okay? Are you doing great? Everything. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Great to hear from you. <laughs> wow. Okay, you can, you can continue. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you know what uh, a torrenting is and P2P technology, so just kind of it's you're you're grabbing a song from your friend and it's an easy way to do it online. So, you know, me and you, if I got a song you want and I can, you know, share this away. Uh, the old way might have been a torrent, um, but now uh, the, there's a new technology being developed and it's this interplanetary file system and can do a lot more than just uh, uh, data sharing, I guess. A lot more capable. Uh, and it is actually so it's a different kind of internet, right? It's a different yes. kind of internet. Internet 2.0. To, today's internet is not reliable, for example. We write for our books and we, we want to, to source a video or a web, web page. And that video, it, it won't stay there on YouTube forever. You know, actually, they will delete it immediately. Like some videos only last for a few months. And this new kind of internet, you in theory, you put a file there and it, it remains there. It because it takes it from other people. You know, and oh, that's interesting. I think I've he, I think I've heard about this. I think Seb has talked about it. It's where you want to also uh, save all the books and every all the work that you've done, right? Yes. So it doesn't get deleted or yeah. anything, and you don't lose it. No. And it's it's basically you're you're almost okay, cool. yeah it's like you and I so I can basically be one of these nodes that that helps that network 
and I can choose like I want to host like a terabyte of people's data, and I can kind of choose to, to host uh, Trump's data. So the idea is is that uh, we're all gonna have and th there's like other cool things that it's like no matter where you are, the way it it hacks up these files into these little 256 uh, byte chunks, any any identical chunk on somebody else's computer. It knows that, and there's no duplication on the network. It just recognizes that there's now two connections, the same information. So anybody... uh, it's, a, it's an interesting, yeah, it's, it's that interesting idea of um, like online, you can upload the same cat picture a thousand times or a billion times, and it will duplicate. And this way, it takes a lot of space. But in this new talk, it's an interesting idea. Like you upload that uh, file with the cat, with the picture of a cat, and that file has a, it's unique. It's zero and one, zero and one, zero and one. And it only stays there one copy. If I upload the same file, it detects that this, the file is already there and it doesn't upload it anymore. So if I upload from documentary, it, I upload it once and it just... Yeah. So that's, that's, that's very interesting. You could download Trom documentary. We could all have like, you could get it from Vimeo or YouTube or whatever. And as long as as long as the, the file and the hash is the same and, and the nodes are online, it connects that. And it's like, this is the same file. It's here and here. And now there are two links and anyone else who mm -hmm. also posted the Trom file. So we're trying to get, you know, like four or five people to constantly have the Trom thing going. Then anybody else who, who has the hash and wants to access uh, the documentary or, you know, watch something, read the book, they're getting it from us. You're no longer, mm -hmm. you know, going to Google uh, and then, you know, going into their servers. Like uh, it, it's, whew, it's very exciting, but it's uh, very <laughs> unstable right now. So, uh, it's on hold until uh, we uh, work out the kinks. Yep, I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that in, that's interesting. Anyone else has any idea? <laughs> do you know, do you know what the subject is? No. <laughs> no? Uh, okay. Positive, positive cast. That's all. I... <laughs> yeah, just one second so to explain this. It's just like we wanted to make um, a Trumpcast about something that is more exciting and positive about our world because we always migrate towards talking about the bad stuff of, of, of this world. And we said, let's try to make a Trumpcast about interesting stuff and exciting stuff. That's, that's you know, for us, it's um, like a positive thing about our world if you can find something like that. Okay, so if, if you wanted to say something. No, I just wanted to comment, a uh, positive comment. Uh, that uh, <laughs> that uh, it's very cool that you know all that stuff, Cody. Well done. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I've been in it uh, pretty deep for a while now. Tio knows the struggle. We've we've hacked that out a couple of nights and frustrations were had. But uh, yeah, just uh, it's really cool with the uh, open source and stuff because we've actually talked to like the de de developers like working on this and stuff. And uh, mm. uh, like uh, Orion is one of the programs. It's like a program to interface with the IPFS a little easier and just, you know, it's kind of a synergistic, you know, uh, they provide some, some benefit to us and we can give them feedback and like issues we're running into and stuff. And like, and exactly. that's another positive stuff with, exactly. with open source in general, the open source community, you can get involved in you know, I'm getting involved with all kinds of stuff there. And if I do something and I fix a piece of software or I report a bug, then if Sophie is going to use the same program, she's going to benefit from my work, basically. So it's cool. that's I think is very positive with open source. Basically, like problem solving in action. Yep, and and it's it's a collective group. It's not like centralized. So actually, uh, AMD uh, Advanced Micro Devices they actually dev design um, uh, graphics cards and, and CPUs and stuff. Uh, I believe their graphics card division is actually open source. So you can like help to improve their video drivers as opposed to it being just they have access and only they can modify whatever. They've opened up the code so that other people can help and help uh, fix these bugs. And it's and it's free because people want to do that stuff if, if it's going to improve like their gameplay. And I can increase, you know, performance for everybody's cards one to two percent with a couple lines of code. And I know how to do that. That's, I don't know. That's wonderful to me. <laughs> it's full of open source software out yeah. there. If anyone wants to say something new from a different kind of domain, if not, I have a, a huge list here. <laughs> Lots of things. Yeah, what about you? Because <laughs> you are always so optimistic. 
I'm afraid to speak. <laughs> I see that you are like. <laughs> that team is going to be poor after the cast. I have to, yeah, I have to be very careful today. Uh, well, the positive stuff I found um, in our created news. And we added some of the news under the video. Mm -hmm. You can look out. So one of them is uh, about an app application for uh, mobile phones. It works either from, on Apple's or uh, Android. It's called uh, Map of Life. And what it does, it's um, when you're somewhere out, found some, let's say, uh, new species, not new species, but some in, uh, some interesting species of, of the nature or uh, any animals or insects, uh, you can uh, photo them, t take a picture of them. And the, the app also scans it and tells all the information about this uh, creature to you. And also it records um, its uh, location, like GPS data, and sent to, to the huge database. So it's also been uh, kind of benefits for the scientists for, for the tracking the different animal and insect species. So it's kind of interactive uh, app, uh, which benefit bo both and kind of users. Uh, you, you can potentially find some news. And, uh, also, the scientists uh, who research the data because, um, yeah, because it's, it's track your location. It works also without internet, so it can be used in re remote areas. Yeah, like the citizen scientist program. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've seen like they had a program, similar program for a particular like a type of bug or something. It was like an invasion in some parts of the USA, and they said, "Can you take a photo and send us the pictures?" And thousands of people sent, did that, and they discovered like two, three new species of that kind of bug. They had no idea, but because you see, when you want to do science, you need uh, mass collaboration. You cannot uh, rely on a few scientists here and there. So that's very exciting to do it like that. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, what you said before. It's Kind of, every, kind of everyone benefits from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you found something new, some new plant or what, you can scan it and it's in database. And next time other persons see it, it can, you know, have some information about it already there. And also it's like a Wikipedia in the real, real life, you know, in the offline yeah. life. And I think in the future we will have more and more of such interactive uh, citizen science pro projects. Yeah. And it's very awesome. It's kind of like open source idea as well. Everyone mm -hmm. benefits and everyone can be involved. Not just passive users, but also you can contribute. Uh, and collaborative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That was a very interesting one. Mm, yeah, I like that. I like it. Okay. I, I, I would say um, what really excites me about the future is um, dealing with aging. Like. Um, this idea of you can basically cure aging or, or find a treatment for aging to me is like wow it's such a new new way of not only of thinking but a new kind of research and it's so exciting in my mind because uh, now it's, it's a serious um, research field it's not only like an idea like how would the world would look like if we didn't age is uh, research and is people are doing research not only in animals but they're starting to do it in humans and what is fascinating is because, you know, the most deadly diseases today, like cancer or cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer, they are all either related to aging or uh, they emerge from the process of, of aging, basically. So if you fix aging in a sense, then you will fix the other diseases as well. And this is to me so fascinating, like, wow, well, could we like live for maybe hundreds of years? Or, or maybe more. In theory, it's not, uh, it's not impossible because there are animals like lobsters or even alligators that they, they don't really have an age. They don't really age in that sense. They, they didn't see like a lobster being old and you know <laughs> dying for from old age. They didn't see that. They just grow, 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 and then people eat them. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't know if, if they, are going, they are aging or not. And there are other like um, it's it's a little creature, uh, aquatic creature. It's like um, jellyfish, uh, a little small jellyfish that uh, grows old, and then it divides in copies of itself. It's tiny copies, and those copies are growing again, and they divide in other copies. In in a way, it doesn't even 
okay, like going old and going young and going old and going young. And if it's, all of this is made of cells. It's not like humans are made of plastic, of plastic or, or something like that. It's, we are all made of cells. So if we find uh, the mechanism in some animals that do not age, maybe we can apply that in humans. So to me, that is like, wow, how will this rich research be in three, 400 years? You know, maybe they will look back at us and say, oh, those poor people, they lived to be like 70, 80, you know, I, I'm now in, in my 70s and 80s and I just started life. Yeah. Those poor people back in the days. And I'm so jealous of that because I will, if someone will give me a pill to like live forever, I will take it, not even blink because I have, I will love to do so much stuff. You know, there are some people who say, ah, oh, this is such a bad idea. Even in theory, like it, I will, I wouldn't like to live forever or something like that. Of course, I don't think this is possible for humans to live forever because a bus will hit you or something. But uh, to me, it will be fascinating. There are so many things to, to research into and to learn. So I, I like that. Also, I feel like people's mindsets would change. Maybe they wouldn't feel so uh, like pressured to have kids because, you know, like a lot of people's mindset is I'll have kids so they can live and pass on my traditions or whatever, but maybe they won't feel the need to do that. Or, um, yeah, like you said, just be able to explore a lot more and just, I don't know. <laughs> just, just all the stuff you would learn if you live so much longer. Cause I don't know. <laughs> what would you focus on? What would I focus on? Mm -hmm. um, man, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really uh, interested in astronomy, um, just science in general. I mean, there's so many interesting topics that you just don't realize until you stumble onto them. And then you're like, whoa, what was that? I mean, even just talking about aging, just mm -hmm. learning that, you're like, wow, I didn't even think about that, you know? And so, I mean, I couldn't even tell you because I don't know. <laughs> I mean, right now, my main focus goes to work, you know, so that just kind of, uh, but I think if we didn't, you know, if aging wasn't such an issue, I really feel like people's mindsets would change, including mine. And, uh, you know, I couldn't, I, I couldn't even say, uh, but I mean, what I'm interested in currently, uh, astronomy, you know, uh, just the earth in general, all the different climates, um, all the different landscapes, just how the earth came about, how humans came about, how we just evolved in such a short period of time. I mean, there's just so many subjects. <laughs> you can just go on and on, but I don't know. You want to and what would you do, <laughs> Sophie? Sorry? And what would you do if you will live like 500 years and no problems, you know, you're living, like, there's no fi financial problems and stuff like that. What would you focus on? What would you do? No financial problems? Yeah, it's the even... positive track. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even uh, need to now live forever. Just all the financial stuff would be gone. That would be great, uh, you know? Uh, but if that was the case, even, like, either of them, uh, yeah, I would just do all of the stuff that... Uh, that I'm not doing currently because of, of the barrier of trade, you know, like I would go to this Ko Tao uh, island and do scuba diving in Thailand, you know, and I would do a bunch of different stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I think that people would also be very, very interesting. They know now would grow to be like 300, 400 years old. Uh, because the amount of information and the amount of understanding accumulated in these people, um, yeah, that just sounds really cool to me. I don't it's know, such it's a way to, to go to an, an advanced age, like say Jack Fresco, for example, mm -hmm. to learn lots, lots of stuff and then yeah. just die. And all of that yeah. in your mind is gone, you know, it's no mm -hmm. backup, nothing like that. Yeah, it's gone 100%. And I think there's also like there's this thing in that you need to kind of also understand yourself in a way to kind of go on to understand others and to be empathetic and to make a difference in all these things. And that's also an emotional process with yourself, understanding your background, understanding why you act, react in, in, in certain ways. 
And I think that's also a process that kind of gets lost in a big way when someone dies, because that is a process that's very individual from person to person. Um, yeah, I think so, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I remember in one of the video Fresco said, like, if I would have, if I could live more, like, 100 years more, I don't exactly remember what was the number about 100 years or more so i would uh, by that time i would understand everything and i would get bored and then, then i could die <laughs> so that's <laughs> I, I, think I will need more to, to get bored YouTube is back up oh yes oh, you're slowing me down no problem oh there's a problem this this was the positive <laughs> cast here this was the one we could have made it. <laughs> That's why there is no problem. It's only yeah, because of that. No problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just changing profile to book. You pick up the screen. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. Facebook's is not letting me reconnect to it. Uh, you can check YouTube's, see if it's, it looks like it's going somewhere. <clears throat> it's, uh... It's Bill Gates trying to make it really negative. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> blocking everything. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll try. We are live on YouTube? Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah, we are back on YouTube. Okay, okay. let's wait for the YouTube's Facebook. Getting, yeah, I don't know why Facebook's being worth the they have the persistent. <laughs> Yeah, I just wait a little bit and then Dima, you have a little bit of work with this stream because you have to maybe put them together as one, you know, because you are mixing the stream, you are making them okay for Trump side, or you are not going to do this. So I didn't get. Oh, uh, join join in the you, you edit, join the video together because you did that in the past when you had like two. It has two streams. You edited them, put them together. Oh right? yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, okay, you forgot about that. No, no, I, will do it. I just don't understand your question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, okay, so I don't know if I can reopen the positive cast. I might have to just go live again and we'll just call yeah, it. Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go on yeah. Facebook. But we're all already live, so we can continue. Yeah, on YouTube, but on yeah, Facebook, yeah. we are not. Yeah. Just wait like 30 seconds. So that coding goes back online. And we are still positive. Nothing will bring us down. Okay. It's a learning experience. Oh, it's yeah. learning. <laughs> Under pressure. Uh, Under pressure. Pressure makes strong. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, my stream key, please. Stream key. You have the stream key? Yeah, I have to go. I think they fed me a new one on Messenger for some reason. It like wiped uh, the weird thing that just happened. Mm -hmm. No problem. Oh, for... I mean, not frustrating. I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive. Uh, I'm going to get there in no time. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if you. Like connection drops again. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to be so positive, Tio. You just. <laughs> I'm sure Quaddy was swearing when he was not. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. no, not now. Come on. Yes, thank you. Okay. And yes, give me that key. Awesome. One, two, Facebook. Three. Four, five, six. Keep going, Teal. I think by the time you reach it, it's a 10. 10, 11, 12, and. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, it's the right key. Take it. <laughs> Yay, we are live on everything now. <laughs> okay, okay. So, <laughs> I hope so, yeah. Welcome back to the positive Can... cast. <laughs> Welcome back. Stay positive. Very positive about being back. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back to our discussions. I, I don't remember what we discussed. I think we're discussing about aging and what you will do, like exploring the world and, and stuff like that. Because it's so much stuff to explore. 
like I always skip that uh, in, in my background because I'm like, wow, what is there? You know, what is in those photos? It's like billions of stars. And every star is like, it has like, if, if our star has nine main planets or eight main, main, main planets and maybe hundreds of other smaller planets, imagine if billions or, or trillions of suns around the, the uh, on, from the entire universe, they have the same amount of planets what could there, what, what is there, you know, what is there? And it's, it's so, in a way, frustrating, but positive for us because we are here on this little planet and we want to, to see those faraway planets and faraway suns. And uh, with the telescope, it's, it's a bit tricky because we cannot zoom in, zoom in, zoom in too much. So maybe we will invent something new. And one new thing that uh, they discovered recently are <clears throat> gravitational waves. So gravitational waves are like the space is bending and we get that signal from the space and it's it's so fast that maybe we can use that as a way to touch other worlds. So we use that gravitational wave and if it's, it bumps into a planet or into a system, solar system or something big, we can pick that up. It's like uh, someone who's blind and uses uh, sound. It does, does like this, like this, like this, like this, and he gets a, a mental map of, of what is out there. So this like, gravitational uh, wave is- yeah, yeah. Echolocation. Yeah. Echolocation. Yeah. Cool. Very interesting. Like, what do you guys? What do you, do you guys think about? Like, what could it be on other planets in terms of, let's say, life? You know, how could it evolve on other planets? I'm so always so curious to even think about this. <clears throat> it's so fascinating because this is just one kind of life here. It's yeah. Maybe yeah, it will be completely different. What we do know exists out there. How can there not be life? But the fact that we haven't found it is it is mind boggling. But also it, it is exciting because there's always something to discover. I mean, when you think about what's out there that we do know about, to me, I just like it doesn't compare to any fictional story that we've created. It just when you know that how can you be interested in like the Hollywood movies and things like that? Like they're just so mundane and repetitive. I mean, especially now, like everything's like a remake of a remake. Like how could people keep watching these or like sporting events? It's to me, it's like, if you've watched one football game, you've watched them all. Like, I don't understand how somebody could, but then when you think about, you know, the solar system or the universe, it's just like infinite and there's so many possibilities and there's just always new discoveries. Like to me, that's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> mind blowing. Yeah, it's like we had like in the past some some stupid uh, like kinder eggs that you will break and <laughs> you will find some a surprise there. It's like the universe is like in that kind of sense, but with billions of kinder eggs and <laughs> don't know what is there if you open them open them open them it's you open a different kind of world you know it's fascinating it's like mm -hmm. um they compared it with the uh, grains of sand from all of the beaches in the world and there are more suns i think not not planets but if suns or planets i don't remember then there are all of the grains of, of sand in, in on earth you know and if you go on, on the beach one time and just put the hand on on the sand and you see how many grains of sand you have on your palm imagine that those are planets and even if you had a powerful telescope to like look on every one of them it will be so fascinating so that's just a few of them you know imagine if you had like if we had this power to have a super powerful telescope to watch like super closely like we watch the moon from here to watch other planets I wouldn't even know where to start. Like no one will have any idea where to start because it's so much out there. You wouldn't know. It would be so fascinating. Yeah, there's. You cannot so even much. imagine. Yeah. Still, so much we haven't even explored on our own planet. Like, uh, o mm -hmm. ocean floor is a is a big one for a lot of peop people. The ocean depths and like almost every time they they go down uh, in the deep ocean, they're like, oh yeah, we discovered a couple new species that mm -hmm. bioluminescence is like you know commonplace down there and stuff. It's like. What? There's aliens right there. They're in the water. <laughs> <laughs> those things are just oh man, they, those are from another planet. Or um, uh, they discovered uh like an isolated ocean in the Antarctic. It's like completely like a frozen little uh 
a biome of water that's been like isolated from the rest of uh, fresh water or whatever down there, salt water. Mm -hmm. um, so it's had like its own area to just kind of self develop for you know eons and what what's in there. <laughs> Freaky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the thing. When you go down deep into the, under the water, and there are such creatures which looks like aliens to us, and they're so unusual, and you just wonder how they even can survive there in such cold, and there's no sunlight, and yeah, no sunlight. They develop, yeah, they develop this bioluminosity, and they they just found some way to survive there and developed. So. Cannot even imagine what could be on another planet and how the species start to evolve there. It's just, I don't know if it's possible even to imagine. Oh, well, they're they're developing even that exact uh, robot to go over to Europa and then drill through uh -huh. the ice into the ocean and then it just wants to swim around and yeah, let's just for science. <laughs> for those who don't know, Europa is not Europe, but it's Europa. The moon of yeah. I think is Jupiter. Jupiter. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's a nice world, and they believe that it's surrounded by ice, and in the middle, it's it's um, basically liquid water because of the pressures mm -hmm. there. So yeah, it's an ambitious plan, but uh, you know, imagine a live stream with digging there yeah. and like, let's see what we are going to find. <laughs> wow, that would be like. Phew. You know. That's something that people should get together and watch a live stream. You know, that's the kind of event that I would love to. Yeah, it was uh. See. Uh, what was it like 2012 or 2013 was it curiosity and i think they they broadcast the event or something or the the landing or, or oh i've seen it, i've seen multiple of them yeah they share yeah, they, they do such things. yeah i love such things like we're landing on yeah. another planet and but you know the super bowl uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Cody, you're great. Uh, 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 um, I mean, the Super Bowl was great. Uh, I had a great time. And, they, uh. and if you think about it, this is so new to our species to explore other planets, because how long was it since like the first mission? I think it's just like 70 years or not, not longer than that. So it's, it's still so young. We, we barely sent something out there. And we still we already know so much about other planets. You know, and even now with all of this knowledge, when they land on a comet or something, they discover something new. They're like, okay, we didn't expect to see this organic kind of materials here, molecules and so forth. We didn't expect that. So that's fantastic. Like, wow. Every time when, if I, when I go out and I see those stars in, in the night nice sky, I'm like, is this for real? Like, uh, isn't this like, it sounds like a movie script. Sounds like a, it cannot be real. Like those little lights are other worlds. And, and they may even not be there, you know, because you see the light coming to you and it takes years, maybe thousands of years to reach you. And it's very difficult for me to like accept that this is real. But on the other hand, I'm like, wow, it's so fascinating. I'm so glad that, I, that I'm not a zebra because a zebra can, can maybe can look up, but it cannot project so much stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm so happy that I'm a human and I can project about such things, you know, it's fascinating. <clears throat> yeah, the outer world. I'm, I'm sometimes I am. I had such discussions with other people about the universe and so forth. And all of every time, I feel like my brain is like turning upside down because I don't. I cannot comprehend all of this stuff. I cannot understand how this can be real. How can this be real? How can those photos are real? I, I know that. I showed some, to some people such photos and they are like they were like yeah yeah you know they are fake they're not fake <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. they, they, they may color them to represent all kinds of elements but they are not fake and they're like no I'm, okay whatever but i think they're fake got nasa photoshop come on <laughs> research flat earth i just watched a documentary about flat earth people it was yeah. so funny. why <laughs> <laughs> I, I I did too, Tio. I did too. <laughs> Very funny. I, it's it's interesting. I actually uh, no no we can't go no not going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Gotta stay positive. Gotta stay positive. Yeah. <laughs> just stay by, uh, on the positive note of, of it being funny. Let's let's stay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we can find this humorous with our scientific instruments and understand. Yeah, it was um. interesting to have an insight into 
into people's mind whom I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me yeah. see. <laughs> <laughs> they need a telescope because when I point the telescope to the sun and I have a sun filter, and I'll show you guys when you, when you come here in May, it's you, you sometimes you see the sunspots. And if you track it down for, for longer, you will see the sunspots moving, you know? So it's mm. you can even detect for your own that it's kind of a round thing. It's not only like uh, a flat <laughs> thing. You can do that and you can even track uh, the ISS, the International Space Station. And sometimes I, um, you can see it on a nice camera with, with the naked eye. You can see like a bright light coming there like so quickly because it goes around the Earth, I think, every 90 minutes. And if you have like a binoculars or a telescope and you, you can catch it and you will see that it's like the solar panels a little bit, you will see. I, I couldn't catch it uh, with my telescope, but yeah, it's fascinating to see that. To understand that this point of light, there are people out there and they are orbiting the earth. Like, and it's the, the distance from me to ISS when I watch it, it's, um, it's shorter than the distance from me to Madrid, and I live in Spain, you know? So the distance is actually very close. It's like 400 kilometers or something like that, 400, 500 kilometers. It's so, it's, you know, it will take me less time to go there with a the car. If I had a car, like straight up, then go to Madrid or something from Barcelona. <laughs> that is I think so. Uh, uh, I guess something that excites me is maybe a uh, future propulsion technologies. Uh, so like, you know, we sent out Vo the Voyager one and two spacecraft, like the mid seventies and like only now, uh, within like the past couple of years, did it leave the, the, uh, our hem, not, not, not hemisphere. Oh no. The solar systems. Yeah. Basically there's a word for it and I, I can't think of it right now, but eventually we're just going to have, you know, it took like, 40 years plus to at traveling at ridiculous speeds to get that far. And that, you know, sometime probably within like the next 10 years or 20 years, we could have something that would like, you know, we could, we could pass, stop by and like check the discs and stuff and be like, Oh yeah, everything's still intact and, you know, take off wherever. And those things are just going to continue at, you know, their speed until great beyond or whatever. And I think uh, Roger is like, uh, 40 kilometers a second or something yeah, like that it's just like it's when it's me imagine it would be like <laughs> like that but in the space is nothing it's completely nothing the closest star to us alpha centauri is like four to five light years away so even with the speed of light which is uh, like it's not even close you know the whatever we have today it will take four to five years to reach that with the speed of light and in realistic terms, I think I, I watched something documentary once, and it will be like thousands of years with our current speeds to reach the closest star, which is crazy. It's like you have to develop a new species. If, you know, you send a spacecraft, and there they multiply and they create a new species, and they will arrive. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Ten generations of humans. Oh. Yeah, maybe there are other species that are. They have a different kind of technology. Imagine how like creepy or interesting it will be to another species to come in contact us or something like that like not like in the movies but it would be so bizarre maybe they even did that because when you go and study ants the ants are not like well someone visited today <laughs> they don't <laughs> they don't even know that you are there so who knows you know and this is more fascinating than those conspiracies that other people are inventing or the movies because you cannot even imagine how a different kind of species will be and in, or interact with us yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah interesting about uh the aliens i was watching joe rogan and it was like uh he made a, re a reference it's almost it's like kind of we have we have an understanding of like you know where we have like an uncontacted tribes kind of thing like we we're at a level of understanding or whatever and we've decided that we should like leave these people alone almost like we've even developed that within our own species kind of thing so potentially uh you know if we if, if project that further towards you know an alien species like oh this you know this type zero civilization you know just let them do their thing and when they're ready <laughs> when they're ready they'll they'll know how to how to find us kind of thing it's like even, even when we're trying to uh you know we have these like little tiny experiments that are barely funded just like you know watching like a tiny patch of sky uh 
I guess you could think back to like the wow signal we got in like the 70s uh -huh. or whatever. And like, you know, we we're watching just like this tiny little patch of sky and we got these uh, prime number sequence uh, alien or military, like just doesn't doesn't matter. But just the fact that we're only watching such a small fraction of the sky that, you know, if aliens are, are, are beaming from like 80 percent and there's just all these signals and we're just not looking for them. It's like we'll never know <laughs> until we start looking for them, until we like want to take this seriously. And then it's like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, what do we even know what to look for if 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 an alien is is searching for you know such a thing? Because you don't even understand how the universe behaves. Because that wow signal or something uh, along the lines, they discovered many times in the past like weird signals. One time they discovered a very powerful signal that repeated exactly like like a clock clockwise, like like two, 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 like that, like that. And they were like, it's impossible in our universe to be something that repeats so like with such precision mm. but we didn't know back then about pulsars pulsars are, are those very compressed stars that are emitting radiation from one pole and the other and they spin like that all the time all the time all the time and they were getting the signal like one two three four and they were thinking like maybe it's an alien species signaling us but no we didn't understand the universe and it was like not long ago that's, that's uh, fantastic so Maybe the species haven't like developed brains per se, and they're just like microscopic little creatures that live in I don't know the water of the planet, and that's that's all that there there is for life. Yeah, even just like a very very simple basic life form on like another planet. Even, even... I mean, even when you think about how the Earth evolved you know it was like really violent weather wasn't much that could exist at that point so who knows just within our solar system yep. yeah even if we found like uh you know if we if if we find you know life on another planet even if it's you know traces of past life or or uh uh whatever just the possibility that life has evolved like anywhere else like the exponential increase like ah <laughs> not only that they calculated once they said we have so many planets in the universe that is is not only likely that life exists it's very likely that life like it's another Cody out there mathematically speaking it's another Cody on another planet that does the the live stream crashed on him yeah, yeah. a few minutes ago <laughs> So yeah, they say that mathematically it's possible because there are so many possibilities. It's like you're playing cards and uh, you'll shuffle them in, in a way that, you know, there are so many possibilities that you'll shuffle them in the exact same way multiple like, times yeah, as possible multiple times. Because, because of so many possibilities, which is wow. And there are other planets like they have two suns. It's actually, as far as I know, having only one sun is uh, it's not a, a common thing. Usually there are two suns or three suns and planets orbiting around them. So imagine if we were living on a planet with three suns, maybe it will never be dark. Or who knows how they are orbiting. But there are many, many possibilities. Or there are another thing that is so fascinating is called rogue planets. There are planets who are kicked off the solar system and they are wandering alone in the universe and they don't have any stars around them. They don't orbit anything. And imagine if we could be with if our planet will be kick, kicked off the solar system and we will be like, wow, you know, we don't have any, no, no sun anymore, probably, you know, it, it's so different, like just finding a rogue planet somewhere in the universe. It's crazy. <laughs> okay, maybe we can go from to another subject if you guys want to talk about something else. Because I still have subjects. Yeah. I cannot stop, so. I will <laughs> let other people like Dima. You can say something positive because you don't. <laughs> Nothing if excites you, other, you, like. If you got other subjects, you can you can start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So what I was thinking about is another piece of technology that is so amazing today is CRISPR. So this CRISPR technology. It's actually, as far as I understand, something evolved from a bacteria. And it's like a knife that can cut the DNA in very specific places. You cut a piece of DNA, you replace with other piece of DNA with, with the same tool. 
And if you think about, we are made of DNA. That's basically the cells and inside the cells, the DNA. And if you want to fix diseases, if you want to give us superpowers, if you want to edit anything in terms of cells, you have to go for the DNA. And if you have this amazing tool that can cut anywhere, it means that you can put there like, I can put like blue eyes for you, or I can put like uh, immunity to HIV, or I can put, actually they did, they did that in China recently. They developed, they um, changed the DNA of a, of a fetus to, to be immune, immune to HIV as far as I remember, and it's, it yeah. was a bit controversial. Or that, that was some, they were trying to change something, and that was like something that also fell out of it. It was like, oh yeah, also they'll be like resistant to, or immune to HIV, and it was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's fascinating to be able to ed edit the, the genes from a DNA. It's amazing. It's, it's completely amazing. Like you can, it's like uh, you have a leg, Lego, Lego blocks, and um, uh, up until now, we also we like use a sword or something or like a big uh, boxing gloves to be able to pull them apart. We, yeah. and we couldn't do it very well, and now we have our fingers and we can do it very precisely. Right. Cut here, put there, and you can build even maybe new organisms. Oh, this is fascinating. Uh, hmm? Actually, I don't know if you saw this, TJ. Or, uh, um, the, uh... TJ. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, uh, they created synthetic DNA, four new letters of synthetic DNA that 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 uh, can work with the current uh, uh, GCAT, G -T -A, yeah. Um, yeah, four new letters. And then it's like, they work with like existing DNA? Uh, what does that enable? <laughs> Where does that lead us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I think the entire world of, as I told you before, I want to make a book about shapes just shapes because uh, the shape of something it's what creates its properties like i explained in the book that we recommend the trom trom art book even pills when you take a pill it's nothing more than a building block with a specific shape and there are many many of them like billions trillions of them those little shapes like uh, lego pieces and they go inside you and they basically um, like lock to s different parts of your body that's all that pills are doing nothing nothing more than that so everything is even light. When you see a butterfly, it doesn't have a pigment for color, but it's about the light reflecting from the wings. And because the wings are a specific shape, it's either blue or green or whatever. So if we, in that sense, at the micro microscopic level, if we manipulate the shapes of things, we can invent so many things. We can invent uh, from like new resistant to bacteria materials to more strong materials to it, it's crazy what you, you can do there. So it's yeah, that's work. another uh, really really interesting subject to me is like nanoscience and nanotechnology. When you get down to that scale and you replicate uh, mm -hmm. nature, like water resistant materials, we can use that to advance society. Like things like that really interest me as well because it just blows my mind to think that you could get down to that scale and then rearrange things and and make things that are useful out of them, especially like if you look at a butterfly, you know, a, uh, the ordinary person would just be like, oh, it's beautiful or whatever. And that's that. But really, we could use that to make something useful as well. Yeah. Now in technology, it's a huge subject. It's actually the, the book that I want to write. It's about non technology, but I, you know, I want to call it shapes because it's all about the shapes. It's all about the shapes. And I was a bit surprised, you know, because you don't really question such things. Like when you take a pill, you're like, whatever, it does something. It's magical. We don't know exactly what it does. But when you look at the microscope, that pill is only like that. That's why you have side effects, because they cannot make a, a Lego piece that it will uh, stick exactly to where they want to. Because they send billions inside of your body, some will stick to parts that they didn't intend to stick, you know. it's. That's why you have side effects, you know, and you look at different in a different way of, on like diseases or like you have a fever. Now you understand that ah, because of those little blocks inside me, the, the tiny blocks, the Lego blocks, maybe they stuck to some parts of my body that make my body react like that. And I have a fever or something, which is so fascinating. It's so interesting. Yeah. What about placebo effect? Then? 
how it is working. By some studies, it's sometimes it's it's effective for about like forty percent than comparing to to traditional medicine. I just yeah, I think it's for only for some things. It's more effective than than others. Yeah, but it's just just generally interesting how this yeah. thing works. Just yeah. your mind. Does your mind produce these small shapes which which heals you? It, yeah, it's ah. like, yeah, it would be because uh, like a placebo, even if even if the pill you're told is like, this is a placebo, there's still a benefit to just taking the pill anyways. And it's yeah, like, yeah. what is that? <laughs> <laughs> that, that? That's just that interesting phenomenon that's been studied. It's yeah. like, yeah, we have mm. we have some capacity to uh, self heal some capacity I to at least think is more a way of dealing with pain mainly is not as far as i understand something that we produce is something the way is the way that we interpret some some effects it's it's a new field anyways and i, I know there are on each side there are people saying something some people are saying like the other thing it's it's a bit of a fight there but it's very fascinating because they studied even like uh, stomach pain or the the gas they measure the levels of gas inside the stomach and based on the placebo the there is some people reduce the the amount of, of gas or of, of air inside them just because like it, it was a, a reaction of the body basically in a way maybe not only the mind yeah, or you know. yeah that uh yeah that that it just shifts something or even um even there's a benefit just to like being heard and seen and, and like cared for by someone uh just even having that concern man it's like oh wow you know i feel better after that just these things being measured, these things being, you know, this data being collected and then used for good, I want to be awesome for all of us. Even the fact that we can use today viruses, we load them with some like anti-cancer medicine and we, you put the virus back into the body, like you take HIV, you remove the parts that are harmful for people and you just um, leave... Um, the mechanism of HIV that infects cells, you leave it in place and you put a load on it or something. And it's basically use, use HIV virus to kill cancer cells. And there are, there are many clinical trials today that are quite effective in, in doing that, which is again about shapes because it, it changes something to the shape of the HIV virus that can only attack the cancer cells, which is very interesting. <clears throat> The world of shapes. Yeah, the, it's very fascinating. Yeah, key and lock mechanism. That, uh, why viruses kill was a good one too. Well, it also makes you think about all the things that are going on inside of your body that you don't think about. But there's just a million, you know, things going on that are just constantly working that you just never think about. <laughs> another universe. It's another universe. Yeah, it there. is. I mean, just like your blood, your blood pumping through your heart. You know, I mean. It's crazy. <laughs> All the blood cells. When I was little and I, I learned that my that the heart is always beating, I started to have panic attacks because <laughs> I was feeling like my heart is like, what if it stops now? What if it stops now? I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm panicking now. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, or just yeah. I think I thought that way about blinking. Like Oh, oh man, yeah. <laughs> here, like... Remind me about it. <laughs> Manual blinking. Manual breathing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Breathing. <laughs> the breathing the breathing the same. Like imagine that we take this thing from the around us, we take it, goes through our body in a way we are so connected with the atmosphere. We think of ourselves almost like a fish will be naive to imagine itself on, on the land. You cannot stay there on the land. You need the water. Same with us. That's why when they go to ISS, they have to put us in our own aquariums there to protect us from the, <laughs> to give us oxygen, then put us in the other aquarium to pump oxygen into us. It's like, it's crazy. That's actually. Yeah, so or crazy. just what happened. Oh, sorry. You can go ahead. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it was just about, you know, breathing and we we're talking about placebo and the and the body's own ability to heal and um 
And something that I found very interesting and something that I'm very positive about is uh, the Wim Hof method. I don't know if you guys know it. Yep. Do you? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah? <laughs> we, had, we had a debate recently. Yeah, what? <laughs> oh, really? All right. So you guys know it, I guess. Yes. Well, uh, I, I, I yeah. do, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's no, but it's, it's just like uh, reloading your batteries, like your energy centers in, in, the, in the cells of the body, kind of, by oxygenating everything and, um, and making everything alkaline. Uh, this way that, that illness comes a lot from, uh, from uh, acid buildup in the body and stuff like that. So I think that's a very fascinating thing, this thing that instead of how medicine usually does it, is like we have the diagnose and then we kind of want to figure out how like how do we treat that instead of being like whatever you kind of uh, whatever the illness we're just going to give your body the power to fix it kind of so that's like a like a very close to like uh, like a general kind of healing process uh, without having this very specific like like a pill for example for a certain thing yeah, like a, a yeah. targeted. Mm. Yeah, we think we, we will, even in, in such cases, I, I've read about this. Uh, if there is something there that we can we can measure and we need like big clinical trials and we need, we need to find a way that we can prove that. And, and this is another positive thing about our world, science. You know, mm. it's, it's, it, um, it doesn't care about uh, human emotions or human like what you want to achieve with something. It's if it's science and it's science. You know, you do uh, scientific research, and if you can replicate it and so forth, then it doesn't matter if it's it's uh, thinking with your own feelings about the, this kind of thing. It doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. it's going to like push into a corner and say it's not true or it's it is true. Mm -hmm. And it's such a fascinating thing with science because even science is so uh, like. 200 years old or something, the, the proper science, you know, the one with experiments and so forth. And it's fascinating. It's it's fascinating. Like, I know this example with the infectious diseases, when they invented the theory of, of the germ theory of disease, because they didn't know what creates disease for people. And a guy had a brilliant idea. He said, I, I'll put, because they said that, um, realize that disease comes from swamp or from um, uh, meat that is, they, you, you left meat or, or food and it, it's, it's going to, uh, how do you say that, um, um, rot. And uh, he said, okay, let's see, because they, they had this theory, like, is the disease coming from the this uh, rotten meat or is coming from outside or is someone is bringing? And he took three jars and he put uh, an egg or and uh, an meat inside in one jar. He, he leave, left that open. In another jar, he he put the same meat and the same egg, uh, the same kind of food, and he closed the lid very tightly. And in another one, he put the same kind of food, but he put on top like a piece of cloth, you see, that, that he can breathe through. And he left that uh, for several days. And what he observed is that the jar with the open lid, he had lots of maggots inside, and the disease will, will spring from that. The one with the closed lid had no maggots. So he realized, okay, it that, doesn't come from outside in a way, okay? It, so it comes from inside. Let's see, let's see the, three, the third jar. And the third jar with the cloth on top, the meat was rotten, but the maggots were uh, on top, on top of the cloth, you know? So he realized that something attracts this, maybe the smell or something, and the maggots come from, not from inside the meat, but they come from outside. Maybe it's, um, it's like uh, flies that come there and lay eggs or something like that. So it's a simple experiment that he proved when he proved that you know, maggots and then disease, he proved later on, doesn't come from inside the meat, you know. It, it comes from outside, but it's attracted by the rotten meat. It, it was a very brilliant experiment, you know, because he proved that if you close the lid very tightly, nothing comes from, from there. So it's not a self-generating thing. So this is the science, basically. This is the, the idea of science. Let's do such experiments. Let's stop with our ideas and just do experiments. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> He has also been doing some of that, uh, this guy, Wim Hof. He's been uh, like injected with, with viruses and stuff like that and has been living through that. So it could just be very cool if we could kind of, um, it's, it's just difficult because a guy like that, of course, doesn't get much funding. So he can't now do a, a huge clinical experiment. So that's very difficult. 
He did do the, when he did the endotoxin study, he did, uh, he was able to train some other students to mm. also have the reduced yeah. inflammation or whatever. Uh, usually now you put, you, you put me into a corner because I want to say something negative that I read about this. But <laughs> it's a positive I, I, okay, cast, so so I, I will premise that <laughs> not everything the person himself outs is scientific. Uh, but that there are scientists being scientific, studying what he's he's doing, and uh, that there is something he is able to teach other people that reduce uh, reduce uh, the specific reaction to this endotoxin they inject them with. Um, it's it's just like a difference between like you kind of feel like like you have the flu for maybe a couple of days, and that they're able to um, kind of. They'll have like a lower fever. Uh, their their symptoms will not get to like such a high level. They're able to keep it much lower. Um, whatever this breathing and and uh, meditative technique he's he's developed. This is this is also studied in like the the Buddhist monks and things like the the heat generation mm -hmm. thing is like a real thing. There's like brown. They're trying to link like brown fat to it is part of it. Uh, brown fat. So Wim Hof and his brother actually have higher higher levels of this in their uh, system, but his brother does not have, his twin brother does not have the same uh, capability. Uh, but when they're, when, when Wim is not doing his, his separate technique, that they're, they're both baseline the same as you should be in cold water and whatnot. Very interesting. But yeah, he, he himself does not, uh, is not of pure uh, science. And yeah, I don't, uh, <laughs> wait, not don't. Um, yeah, I appreciate what he is doing for science. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I won't say anything, but I could say a lot. <laughs> yes, he, it's still uh, science needs to be a, a huge thing. Okay, a huge thing about science yeah. is in today is that the replicability um is not is not being like there's so much science happening and people doing these one off studies that nobody else is coming behind them to actually confirm uh the uh you know that's part of the scientific process is reproducibility. And that's why you should have, you should hold you should hold on to whatever you discover and don't say this is going this is doing this or this is doing that. You should say okay, we need more studies. We need mm -hmm. we need more tests to see to see what's going on. Okay, <laughs> I think so because I think he's okay. I'm not going to yeah, say that, but he, he's selling lots of stuff. <laughs> yes. Well, anyways, it's an interesting study. Anyways, and with placebo, it's it's a very interesting study. It's mm -hmm. in general because they it's um it's one. Do you know about this in, in terms of placebo? They are um, um, giving like some shoulder surgery. Do you know this example to people to uh, relieve pain? And they realize that uh, if you do the surgery but you don't do anything there, just you know anesthesia and you cut the human being here and everything, and he says stays in the hospital the pain is reduced in the same way for those who get the surgery and get something done to their shoulder. It's the same way for, for those who just get the surgery, they cut them open and they put that to, and they do nothing basically, which is fascinating. Like, wow, you, they lie to you like, oh, okay, we did the surgery to you. And they're like, okay, I know, don't feel pain anymore, but we did nothing to you. We just cut your, you over here and then you... <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine your reaction when you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, yeah, we haven't done anything. We just cut you. <laughs> we did not oh, make your oh, thumb my shoulder. Out. <laughs> yeah, your cancer is still there. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, seen that, I've seen the documentary yeah. with this example. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. It's interesting. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, it's 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 super fascinating. Like but it's also works. it's um it's like how far can you go with this? Yeah. Should we like like cut someone's leg to then maybe feel like we did something important to the guy so that he doesn't complain anymore? <laughs> <laughs> how far can you go with this procedure? <clears throat> okay, so if we go from the world of, of medicine to something else. I would say the technology itself. What I'm fascinated about are, are um, flexible batteries. I've seen this, they're, they're trying, they're testing some flexible batteries because it's batteries are like, actually, if you take a modern laptop, it has like 80% battery or something like that because they have like everything else is so small today, the 
the processor and everything. And if you have like a flexible bag, it's even more resilient. They showed some tests, like you can punch to that. It's like a bag, you can punch to it and it can still work. Today, batteries are so like prone to explosions and to all kinds of uh, waste that is, is, is toxic. So it's fascinating to have that. <laughs> Come on guys, other ideas? I, I had something. Something that happens in the world that you're like, wow, this is fascinating. I'm wondering in 100 years how this will be. <laughs> what about what? <laughs> Obviously, like AI is, is interesting to think about, like how that will advance. And I mean, what, what it really could do for us, man. It's just wild to think about. If we really if we live in a world where we, we used AI um, to relieve us of, of all the just, you know, dangerous jobs. I mean, like think of all the jobs that human beings do that are super dangerous that we could let robots do, you know, like a firefighter or something like that. Why not have a robot go in there and, and extinguish a fire or um, I don't know. Um, and it's a lot about yeah. the software, even in that kind of situation. I've seen that it's a lot about software because that the robot has to interpret. So it's not as much about the hardware as it is about the software to interpret where is the fire, what it should do. So that's why AI plays a role even in such situation. It's not only like uh, virtual doctors, it's also in the real world. Yeah, they actually send uh, robots to Fukushima, stuff like that. Like that's perfect. <laughs> I don't care about ionizing radiation, I hope. Or at least yeah, or on, on other thing. planets. Yeah. On other oh, planets. Yeah. Boring things like tasks. Uh, I don't know. Like my sister's an accountant and her manually entering numbers into, I mean, obviously if we lived in a saner society, we probably wouldn't need accountants, but just the transferring of data that a human being is sitting there entering in these numbers when a computer could do it so much more efficiently it just blows my mind yeah and the human's gonna make errors too and uh they're gonna be get investigated and i mean i mean uh they everything's gonna be great it's gonna be well great. human beings minds wonder we're we're <laughs> creatures we're meant to be curious and you know think and we're not meant to just sit there and do tasks like yeah. that yeah. Yeah. I just, I always just try to imagine what the world would be like if. I saw a documentary recently about AI in medicine. They tested against uh, general practitioners from, from a company. They invented uh, an AI to replace the general practitioner to send you maybe to do other tests. Because when you go to hospital, you go to a, in many countries to a general practitioner. And this guy knows a lot about many things and he can send you to do all kinds of tests. And uh, they did a test and then their AI performed better than against uh, the humans, the general practitioners. And to me, that's fascinating because you can have that in, on your mobile phone. So you have a problem, you don't go on who knows what forums to search for that. You just go there and punch in your, your medical problems and they, the AI can come up with a, with a result. I, I, see, I saw this in Spain, for example, they have everything very digitized. So even when I go to hospital in Spain, the guy is like, he has a thing in front of his computer. It's like a program. He he's asks me what one question. I, I answer yes or no. Okay. He puts there. Yes, here, no. You know, I could do that as well. <laughs> no, yes, no. Okay. And then he like punches, like, he says, okay, enter. And he has a list of what is possible to be like. And you can ask more questions depending on that list, or you can send me to do a echography or whatever. So that's fascinating. That's interesting. Yeah, That's... imagine if you could have this in like phone application. You can you can fill this form from your house, and then you've got the the, the diagnosis. And then if it's appeals, you can just turn on your three D printing, and it can print you your pills. Yeah, yeah, that's also a thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that about printing medicine? Have you have you read about? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to print medicine at home. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so it's all, all the same, like printing the food. It's also will be possible soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. Interesting. In general. Sorry? 
I said 3D printing in general is, yeah. is fascinating. Even no, 4D printing. Like you print something and then uh, it, it can shape, uh, take another shape depending on the electricity that goes through it or the environment, the humidity or the uh, temperature. Yeah, you can you can like shake it or add like kinetic energy and it'll like go to a specific shape and then you can like unshake it back. It's... Yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's like making a home that is flat and then you put it somewhere and you put a little bit of current through it and it just inf almost like inflates and becomes rigid. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Bug Mr. Fuller would be like fascinated by such things. Is it like the, the, the same like memory metal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. I think they say the same thing, like they call it uh, 3D printing memory metal, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh. This is 4D printing. Really yeah, but what's interesting that uh, today 3D printing become more advanced and they could print all different kinds of materials, not only plastic, mm -hmm. but also mixed with metal and with other materials. So that's also Yeah, that's, that's such a game changer to be able to print with, because with plastic, okay, you can print all kinds of like a bottle and uh, like a 3D model of you. <laughs> But uh, when you put in uh, metal and it, when you put in put in other other kinds of materials, you can make something that is fully functional. You can even pl print a motherboard. I've seen some are, are working on this. Like imagine you print a, a tiny airplane, you fully print it. Like you print the shell from plastic, and then you print the electric the, the everything that goes into the motherboard, and you print all kinds of components, and you make that thing work basically. That's interesting. It's really, in my mind, because it's not like we're just making this stuff up. This actually exists. That's the most fascinating part to me, is that this stuff really exists. I mean, because yeah. I, I think like so many people just aren't aware. So maybe that's why they're not interested, or they just think that this is like a concept that that could exist, but it does. It already exists. That to me is like, wow, it's so exciting. Yeah, like the book that you wrote about transportation for, for Trump and you you like exemplified other kinds of transportational means. Again, it's uh, from, from flying drones to like printed uh, parts of cars and so forth. It's, it's very interesting. <laughs> it is. It, it, I mean, yeah, that's an, another interesting subject because I don't even drive anymore. I don't. I I got rid of my car after that because I was like, why would I want to keep doing this? It doesn't make any sense to me. And honestly, I feel a lot less stressed. I mean, because I don't have to worry about it anymore, you know. And I just, I think like the possibilities of what could be, and you know, the things, the technologies that are in development. I mean, I would love to get on uh you know the hyperloop or a flying taxi and just go where i need to go and be done with it like that to me just seems so much more logical and i don't want to have to worry about this thing that i'm only going to use like a small percentage of time in my life and then you know all the stress that comes with it that just doesn't make sense i don't know <laughs> Yeah, we will look at wheels like we look now at horses. We will say, wow, you had to, you had that circle there and do this and do that. What was that? <laughs> no, we don't need that in the future or now. Yeah, I mean, self-driving cars, to me, that that's so exciting. I just think that, uh, yeah, once you know that, like, why, why would I want to sit in a car and have to worry about paying attention or, you know, something, all the inevitable, like unknown things that could happen that I have no control over. I, I would much rather, you know, a computer take over and do those things. And, you know, it's not going to get distracted. It's not going to get sleepy. It's not going to get bored. Uh, just all these things. I don't know. Do you all have driving licenses? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sophie, do you have driving mm -hmm. Yeah, all of you. So I'm the only one who doesn't have one. <laughs> okay, it does. It, I don't miss it. <laughs> it's not like, no, I'm, I'm missing something. 
you can even today you can you can take the buses like they already have some infrastructure in place for that it, it could be even better you know because when you go with a car somewhere you have to park and so forth and in theory if you imagine a world with autonomous ve vehicles they can be so much more effective like crazy effective like okay i wanted to say something i got you but um yeah they can be a lot more effective than just having an empty bus <laughs> going from one place to another <laughs> it could be very effective yeah because i think like they could eliminate traffic parking structures i mean you could eliminate a lot of pollution thing yeah yeah it's a lot of things sophie you have other ideas <laughs> i want to bring you in <laughs> I Sorry think, for talking too much. <laughs> no, no. I uh, I think I I maybe misunderstood or didn't know quite like what it was gonna be. I thought it was um, it was more like general thoughts, I guess, and not so specific. Uh, I think that's so cool, and I think it's it's great all these things that you're excited about, all of you. Uh, yeah, I just don't have anything specific like that, you know, like this <laughs> new thing that you know. Um, what excites you? <laughs> I think what excites me is, uh, and this may sound stupid now in the shadow of all this crazy cool stuff you've been talking about, but just the simple thing of of the interconnectedness of, of everything today. So that, I don't know, also with Joe Rogan's podcast, for example, just like this, like, I don't know, displaying all these different realities for people uh kind of bringing the empathy out maybe in people and being more open um and also just bringing together people on also a global scale so it's it's kind of seeing that we all have the same human needs um no matter the, the religion or what else we like if we're transgender or not or all this different stuff that uh, we all want to be loved and we all want to be accepted and all of this stuff yeah, seeing like similarities across cultures and countries and stuff like that. This is a big thing, wasn't a small thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a big thing because it's it's us seeing each other as a species. Mm. And this is very important, you know, seeing each other as, as one and having the same kind of problems and the same kind of needs. So we don't separate ourselves. Mm. We see ourselves as, as human beings. And I would love to see more and more people. I would love to see, sometimes I have this fantasy of, of replicating like Carl Sagan a billion times, because he was like billions and billions, yeah. to replicate him a billion times and put, put him on all kinds of TV shows and everywhere, just put him right there. To talk to people there and say, hey, you are all humans on this planet. And <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want that feeling, you know, again, because I, I, I was watching uh, two days ago a lecture with him. It was so interesting, the way that he talked about us being the human beings. I want to see that in people. I don't want to see any more um, our little groups of you no know, black people, transgender, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. I want to see someone saying we are all humans. We are all humans. Let's do something for us, the humans. You know, mm -hmm. I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, the the interconnectedness is is a big thing, and and the shift even to uh, there's uh, so called the intellectual dark web, uh, but basically <laughs> like. Uh, people have kind of used the internet, kind of gotten to this point, and they, they're kind of understanding, hey, things aren't, you know, quite, quite don't seem quite right. Society's kind of, you know, in this area. And there's kind of this awakening happening just kind of silently on the internet of, of these people who like these, like uh, Joe Rogan's a, a great example um, of just these people who, like, you're pulling in, like, these, they're, they're like the philosophers of our day that you know, pretty much get interviewed on Joe Rogan and people are watching, you know, two, three, four hours of just two people at, or two or three people. Just this long form discussion is a new phenomenon that people are actually like podcasting is huge right now. People love that out. Just, you know, it's, it's almost the, uh, like the antidote to the ADHD phone. Always got to distract mm -hmm. with something. The podcast is like, Ah, uh, you know, you get your attention back. You're focused on that. Well, sometimes. In, in, yeah, I, I, what I want to add to this in a positive way is like in the future, I hope that people don't sell so many books when you, they go to podcasts and promote their own shows. Yeah. 
like they do in some podcast that I've heard. <laughs> yeah, that was, yes. that was a borderline negative comment. Yeah, yeah that, that is. <laughs> we can touch on that too, but I won't. <laughs> I hope that in the future podcast will be all, only about the ideas, you know? Yeah. yeah I really hope that. <laughs> like like this this kind of thing where we got right here where it's just, you know, there's there's no real, uh, the, the, no shilling. Promotion no shilling. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that. <laughs> mm. The love first that. 10 minutes of, of Joe Rogan is always like, and my sponsor for today is Wix. <laughs> and if you need a website, then, you know, really <laughs> this very like American advert type voice. Yeah, yeah it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but on, on the other note, it's uh, also although I can say so much negativity about this, but it's fa fascinating the digital world. The fact, fact that you can create music and you can create movies and you can create so much stuff with the digital world. Like I have one single laptop and I'm creating like books. I design books, I create videos, I make uh, I customize operating systems and so forth. I can do a lot, a lot with this digital, digital world. And it's so interesting because it's quite accessible for most of us. And to me, it was always like this window to another world. I was always so fascinated to like search something that I never maybe searched before. I don't know anything about. I want to know like, how is this going? Like, how is this? I, 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 sometimes I'm like, what I don't understand is this thing with cameras. I never fully got that picture, <laughs> how they work, you know, how they take a picture, how, how the, the process, you know, I want to know the physical process and it's still to me fascinated. Like, wow, it's from digital to the other kind of the photos in, in the past. Because yeah, in the past, it was like this. Yeah, it, but you know, those big cameras and the guy was like, Poof, something oh, like that. And, oh, yeah, the really old and the light, yeah, the light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was that? I want to know. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. And you can find today, you can find the answers for everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, the same fascinating me. Uh, how the way the first music was recorded, even before the vinyls, there was like a wax tube. It's tube made of wax, and yeah, and it's just a needle. And somehow, it's just by writing the the sound um, sound scans, it just produce sound. But it's just it's just cutting the shapes of the sound on the wax, and then. <laughs> when you put needle back again, it sounds. <laughs> it's just yeah. how, like how. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> it's the same vax, but just cut it in specific shape, you know. And that's how those um, the how do you call those with the the, the vinyl vinyl uh, vinyls record, yeah. those. That's how they they worked. Because I remember we had those, yeah, yeah. and sometimes I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was lifting there, and I was like, what what's happening here? Like, <laughs> but it was that needle there. I was like, you could jump through a song by. Putting the needle. <laughs> but imagine, song is there on a piece of plastic, and there's nothing else beside the plastics and the small shapes. It's mm -hmm. just cut it in such way. Wow. <laughs> how do you copy it? <laughs> I don't even get how it's possible for the sound to be there on this piece of plastic, and it can be produced by the needle just going this way. Like, and who had this idea of yeah. making this sound, blah, 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 you know, and doing that? I mean, from here to there, how, how did you come shape. up with that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, it's exactly, you see, <laughs> it's very important. Actually, I think, uh, you know, how they discovered that, I might be wrong, but from, from the back of my head, they were doing this pottery, you know, pottery, when you make them um, from, and they were doing that and they were singing then and they were doing that kind of thing and somehow they they realized that some sound it's it's imprinting into the into the whatever they the clay in a way it's imprinting into the clay and they realized that if you scratch it with something it's it's different it's different from like if you make lots of noises or uh, vibrations around this you can transform it into sound i know it's it's complicated but i i think it's something like that because they have some pottery from old days and you can still see some kind of recorded sound if you if you put it under the microscope and you do that with the needle or something like that. Mm. I don't know. It's it's but it's fascinating. I don't know, but it's fascinating that the information is there, so I can I can search for it if I want. To. Yeah, but it's it's really yeah, it's just sound wave, and I still don't get it till till today how it's possible. <laughs> 
I think it's for me it's easier to understand how it's digital, how you can put it into digital, but not how can you put it on. But even body. that is crazy. Of even course, that is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've struggled with that. With yeah, ones and zeros. Because, yeah. for example, what I know is that if you have a keyboard and you pr press, let's say, W, that W it tra transmits like current in in a particular way, like one to one to one to one to one to three four five something like that. And this is one zero, one zero, one zero, 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 one, one, something like that. It's open, close, open, close. And because of the sequence, it transforms into a W on your computer. But it's only the, the, the electricity there, just the electricity, the mm. electrons. Like, it's only that, which is crazy. It's, that's how it knows. <clears throat> and when you, we type, type so fast, we think, man, um, we are so fast. Maybe some letters cannot pick up, but the current is even faster. You cannot keep up with <laughs> You cannot type so fast that <clears throat> it's very, very crazy. Um, so it's even hard to imagine what new things will be invented even in the 10 years time. This is a great point. Let, let, let's, this, let's speak a little bit about that because I, I'm so curious, like what, what was it in like 20 years ago? What is now that 20 years ago was like, it will be like, we cannot imagine that. <laughs> even take the typical example of mobile phones like mm -hmm. 20 years ago who would even wonder that today it will be like in everyone's hands everyone will be using it and it will become such a crucial part of our life so the people without a mobile phone they're like crazy yeah. <laughs> how can you live without it how was the world before photos for example oh yeah because then those people will, if you, they will be born now, they will be like, wow, what are you doing? I mean, how can you do that? How can you like capture me into that thing? Like, how can you, are you stealing my soul? That's the way they Because it's crazy. And in that sense, um, imagine if you go like a hundred years in, in the future and you will be surprised in the same kind of way. That would be so crazy. And I, I'm sure you, that's how it will be if you will go a hundred years in the future. Is mm. for for me right now that what I see that it will change in the future and that I think with cancer because today everyone is so scared when you hear the word cancer 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 it's like oh I have cancer you're like fuck you're fucked but I think in like 20 30 years maybe let's say 50 years you maybe it will be like like the flu when you say oh okay I have the flu you know it's like I have cancer but I'm not going today to the doctor but maybe in a week you know because I'm it's no rush. <laughs> So I think this is what will change dramatically, dramatically because a uh, hundred years ago, people would be ex so scared if they had like a, a flu-like symptoms. If someone will tell you you have the flu, you will be like, okay, I'm fucked. You know, like I'm going to say goodbye to everyone and I'm fucked. But today we have the flu and we don't even care. That's true. I have, I have a new technology or a, a new advancement they made that's going to benefit us greatly uh so they're building these neural networks with kind of like supercomputers so they're kind of connecting them or building the chips to have these like kind of multiple interconnects kind of like your brain has you know multiple synapses to other neurons and stuff so they're building <laughs> computers kind of with that same model in mind um and with some tweaks to code and stuff uh and and switching to these uh uh this GPU mining, or, or sorry, not mining, but processing, um, they can do uh, simulate these uh, simulations that might take something like 50,000 hours, and they've gotten 50,000 hours worth of simulation down to 200 with just like mm -hmm. one one little tweak that they did. And now that, that, that's, that can benefit anyone else's uh, neural network. So MIT's actually like, they're trying to design this uh, push of a button start up your own neural network. It doesn't matter like what project you have or whatever. They just want it to be very easy and very efficient at, uh, you know, processing these, you know, simulations of, you know, the universe or, or climate models and things. Or even treatments for yeah. some diseases. Exactly. Yeah, the simulating, the simulation aspect is also something that I honestly see it will be completely different in like 50 years. You can, you can simulate like a, a drug instead of putting that drug into people maybe you can probably simulate it in yeah. like a population of a million different people to simulate that, which is amazing. Yeah, which is really gnarly. And then 
Uh, <laughs> the, the <laughs> thinking about what's happening in in the simulation, like how that's even like how it's simulating like people living their lives, interacting how they would, and like spreading. Ah, oh, man, that just blows my mind that we've gotten like not only do we have that understanding, we can translate it into computer code, and then the computer can predict, uh, you know, potentials. <laughs> yeah, because if in computational power goes up, the, our ability to simulate goes up. So yep. just, it goes up every year. So that's fascinating. It, it, and another thing that I want to mention is artificial organs, I remember now, because uh, it's so amazing to think that we can basically recreate a, a heart or maybe kidneys or maybe other parts of our body, it's amazing to be like, okay, we are going to create for you a new heart. You know, so it's it's amazing how how this could look like in 50 years from now, let's say, because now it's, it's just the beginning. But in 50 years, probably we don't, we won't have a shortage of organs. And this is extremely important because right now you have to take the organs from other, from dead people probably, and they are not compatible for you. But imagine then printing the scaffold for a heart and then pumping like stem cells or whatever they put there, and you have a brand new heart. That's and it's, the it's end your heart. Of it. Yeah, and it's your heart because it's made of with maybe your stem cells, which is amazing. It, and even the mechanical parts, you know, we, we, we made an entire book like Human versus Machine, uh, where we talk about not only bio biological parts, but mechanical parts for our body, like artificial hearts and artificial limbs and artificial kidneys and so forth. Even those are like fascinating because they can replicate the, the organs functions. You see so, so many interesting things. CDMI, you don't, you don't, we don't have to talk only about negative stuff. Look how many <laughs> interesting things there are. Yeah, for sure. It's fascinating. <laughs> so Until the opening up think about taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time that I want to, as I told you, to take my head out of this crazy world, I, I go to astronomy. Either I go with the telescope or I, I am interested in astronomy because to me it has this effect of taking my head from here and just looking at some, something completely different. Like, okay, new worlds. I want to know about new worlds and how the universe works. And I'm like, yeah. because And we have a documentary that we recommend. It's called The Mind of the Universe. It's very interesting documentary. It's quite positive. Generally, it's positive. And it, they take many areas of our world and they see, they show you how they evolve, what they are working on, like in medicine, in astronomy, and so forth. There are 10 parts. You can find it on video on it. And it's, it's very interesting. It's in uh, Dutch, I think, but it has subtitles in English. So it's a very interesting documentary. And I love such documentaries. I know, I think uh, Cosmos. Neil Tyson is doing another Cosmos, I think it's in April. It will um, get out in April, so I'm interested to, to see that. I love the, did you all see the first Cosmos, the documentary mm -hmm. Cosmos? Yeah. Did you see it, Sophie? Some of it. No, no, no. With Carl Sagan. I think for me, it was one of the most interesting documentaries. Like, wow, it's like 13 parts. It's, it's almost like you, you are there with, with that journey. Mm -hmm. I love such documentaries and they may, uh, showcase some neg negative parts of this world, but in general, they are very ed um, educational, They're very like full of information. I love such documentaries. And I, I also liked what Neil Tyson did with the new Cosmos because he took the series further. Oh, I so think I'm, I'm the new one and not the second one. Yeah, yeah, the new one as well. I, I liked that as well. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. Mm. There are many like documentaries that I love. They're like um, Blue Planet or or BBC Earth, they, mm. because they put you into another state of mind when you see only about like the underworld water, the underwater world, <laughs> <laughs> or the world of in Antarctica, or it's so interesting. I love such things, yeah. and they, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. <sighs> I think we did great, right? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's hard not to see something negative, but <laughs> no worries. Next week, <laughs> <laughs> they completed the challenge. 
<laughs> Tune in next week is the negative podcast. <laughs> yes. Oh wow. Yeah, do, do do you have any news or anything like that that you want uh, to bring? Dima had two more um pull them up real quick. Uh so we did the mobile the map of uh life. Yeah. Pick up this one. Uh so the next one was the human brain never stops growing new neurons. Uh, I did not get to read that one, but I'm hope that it's exactly like the title. Says. I hope that title's actually accurate, not clickbait. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's from PBS, and usually it's not that clickbait. But it's yeah, it, they kind of proved that neurons are. It's not like you are born with the same set of neurons and you die with them. Yeah, your body always changes. This is another fascinating thing. Like mm -hmm. your body changes everything. Like every part of your body is, is basically. We're changing, yeah. you know, seven, renewing. Seven years, I think, every cell in your body is, like, completely replaced. You're a new person every seven years. Cell-wise. Okay. That's what they say. Yeah. But not many people are <laughs> new kind of persons every seven years. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the last piece of news was uh, 3D printers to weave wearable electronics into clothing. Yeah, basically, they came up with this idea to put... Uh, like, uh, yeah, to, to, to print, I don't remember exactly what was the material, but uh, they print uh, like 3D sensors straight into the fabrics. So that's, uh, it can generate electricity from your motions, like the way you move and the way you go somewhere. And then, yeah, you can ap apply this energy in many, in many ways you can basically. That's cool. <laughs> to charge your phone or whatever. <laughs> but it's like inside the fabric itself so you don't kind of feel it so clothes are not only like just a piece of material yeah, it's, it's so, getting smarter yeah, yeah so probably in the future yeah we'll have such clothes which can do a lot of the various tasks and yeah and how like are we to... going to wash them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't need to wash them because <laughs> they are smart they clean themselves <laughs> yeah <laughs> They I even saw, like, uh, kind of... in terms of that, I saw, like, a washing machine without water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just with, with some particles. That... Yeah, they're the basically, yeah, just clean with vibration. As even, you, you might have your mind blown, but even that is about shapes. Because the, the detergent, the, that thing that you put in the washing machine, is just some shapes that they stick to the dust and they take them out. <laughs> so even that is about shapes. So you see, everything is about shape. <laughs> That's all the news there is. I think that's everything, unless you got anything to add. Well, I think I could talk about such thing. I have many <laughs> ideas. I, I can come up with so many things. The positive cast part two. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll do this again. But yeah, it's interesting because there are so many things that I know so many people they don't know about. That's why I'm struggling with Trump to be like, to create Trump created news and Trump created videos and with video need. Because I want for people to understand that the world is a lot more than just this society, this narrow, narrow-minded society. You can you can learn so much about about the world. And it, the world, like I always said, it's is more fascinating and more complex and more mysterious than any movie, book, or idea that I've ever heard of. I, I think they are they nothing compares. Com nothing compares with this. It's, it's amazing. <clears throat> so for anyone who wants to like um, feed their curiosity, you go on videoneed.com if you want. You, you see there so many lectures. Or go on tromside.com slash tools, and you will see we have many tools to keep you fed <laughs> with information. <sighs> Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and nutritious. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it grows your mind. <laughs> okay, so if you want, we can yep. close this one and next week, same day, same hour, and we will see what subject we will pick pick for the next week. Maybe it's something more like exact. So if you, if Sophie and, and Jennifer, they want, because we participate anyways, <laughs> all over. But I would love to see you there mm -hmm. next time as well. So mm -hmm. please come. 
because it's interesting. Awesome. 